Continuous glucose monitors have been used by diabetics around the world since their release in the early 2000s. But in the past few years, non-diabetics have been using CGMs to track how their habits and lifestyle can affect their metabolic health. There are lots of different non-diabetic continuous glucose monitor apps out there, and I have tested them all. But I think the gold standard is NutriSense, and I've been using them since September of 2022. If you've been following my channel, you'll know that I'm a bit of a data junkie, and that is the main reason I love NutriSense. They give you a lot of data in a very easy to navigate format. Today, I'm going to give you a tour of the NutriSense app and show you all of its features. I'll also walk you through the process of applying a continuous glucose monitor and give you some info about CGMs and monitoring in general. When you sign up for NutriSense, there are different levels of commitment. I think you can do a one month, three, six, and 12 month commitments. And each month, they will send you two continuous glucose monitors. I've got a link in the description that will give you $50 off of your first month if after watching this video, you decide that you would like to give them a Try. Once you receive the package with the continuous glucose monitors in it, you're going to open up one of these boxes here and there are two pieces. You're going to unseal these and pop this section onto this section. Then pick one of your arms. You're going to be applying this to the back of your upper arm. So kind of squeeze an area where there would be a little bit more fat. That's where you're going to want to apply it. Wipe off your chosen arm with rubbing alcohol and let that dry for a minute. Then you're just going to hold the applicator up to the skin don't be scared. This really doesn't hurt at all. I was kind of freaked out the first time I did it, but then I was shocked. It, there was no pain whatsoever. You're going to press the applicator against the skin and that is it. There is some adhesive that holds the sensor in place, but I like to use a CGM cover for mine to make sure it lasts the full 14 days. I'll link the ones I use in the description. I have a packet of black and I also have a packet of multicolored if I feel like wearing a brighter sticker. Now, NutriSense used to send stickers with the continuous glucose monitors, but I've noticed my last few shipments have not included any of the CGM stickers. So that's why I purchased my own. From here, download the app from the App Store or Google Play and sign up for an account. You may have already done this when you ordered your NutriSense in the first place. Once you're inside of the app, you're going to go to this plus sign down here at the bottom right. You're going to tap that and then you'll see five or six things pop up. One of those things is scan your sensor. Click that and then hold your phone up to the CGM sensor. If you have an iPhone, that sensor is going to be right by your selfie camera. If you have an Android, it's on the back of the phone. The first time you scan a new sensor, you're going to see that the sensor is warming up. It does not start this process until you do that first scan. So let's say you put on your sensor and then you forget to scan it. And eight hours later, you come back and you do that initial scan. The sensor isn't going to hold, you know, all of your glucose data for that eight hour period. It's still going to need an hour to warm up initially. Before we move on to the main screen, let's go over the other options that come up when you hit on that little plus sign down in the bottom right corner. First off at the very top, top, you're going to see add a measurement. If you click on that, a screen will pop up with three different fields to fill in type, value, and time under type. Click on that, a drop down menu will come up and you can add tons of different measurements, blood ketones, body temperature, blood pressure, and some exercise related measurements. From there, you can enter the value into the box and set the time and then save that at the bottom of the screen. This will add a data point onto your glucose curve so you can try to match patterns or figure out trends. For example, maybe your blood ketones are only above a 1.0 when your glucose is 95 or below. You wouldn't really know that unless you're tracking it, putting in the data and all that kind of stuff. So this can be very helpful if you are trying to hone in on a specific data point. Let's go back out to the plus sign on the main page and click on the second option, which is journal. Within journal, you can track your mental health and mood. You can write notes to talk about how you're feeling for that day. This is a good way to begin to connect your lifestyle with how you are feeling mentally and physically. The next option under the plus sign is add activity. Within this dropdown, you can add exercise, meditation, sleep, and fasting along with durations of each. The final option under this plus sign is add meal. You can adjust what meal you're eating, scan barcodes of particular food packaging. You can take a photo of your meal and their AI can take that photo and automatically spit out the different food options to put into your diary. NutriSense has a robust food database that makes tracking your food really easy, which is great if you're trying to 
to learn how different foods will affect your blood glucose levels. So now let's take a look at the main screen. Anytime you open up the app, you're going to be at home and you should be able to see your glucose chart for the day starting from 12.01 a.m. and going all the way up to midnight. It's here that you're going to see all of the peaks and valleys of your daily glucose numbers. Below the glucose chart, you'll see your last reading and then next to that, you see your daily glucose score. This is a score composed of four glucose metrics for the selected time period, including peak, average, adaptability, and variability. If you use your thumb to scroll over on that panel right next to your daily glucose score, you can see your daily nutrition summary. Let's move now to the very bottom of the app. To the right of home is history. If you click on this, you will see all of your historic meals, activities, measurements, and journal entries. NutriSense does link to your wearables like your Apple Watch or your Fitbit, so we will talk about how to connect those to the app here in a little bit. To the right of history is trends. When you click on that, you're going to see your data over time, and this is one of my favorite parts of the app. It defaults to today's data, but you can also check out the past seven, 14, 30, 60, and 120 days. If you scroll down the page a little bit, you'll see a bunch of different glucose measurements, such as time and range, variability, minimum, maximum, sleep average, and morning average. Let's walk through each of those pretty quickly, and then after we're done doing that, I will let you know what your goals should be for each of those metrics. Time and range we already discussed briefly. This is the time that you are between the blood glucose levels of 70 and 140. You can make adjustments to these numbers in settings. For example, I adjusted mine to be 60 to 140 because I noticed for me I am non-diabetic of course, but I do dip into the 60s overnight when I'm sleeping and I don't experience any kind of negative symptoms. No fatigue, I don't feel weak, anything like that. I'm not having any kind of hype symptoms. I just, that's natural for me to dip into the 60s while I'm sleeping. So instead of seeing red anytime that that happened, I just went into the settings and I adjusted my range to be 60 to 140. I would recommend keeping your range between 70 and 140 for the first few weeks so that you can see where your numbers settle. And then I would make adjustments from there. I would not adjust the 140 to be any higher. If and when you're looking to make that adjustment, go into settings and then system, and then glucose target range. And from there, you'll see some options to adjust to. Going back to the trends page, variability is how much your blood glucose is spiking and dipping throughout the day. Minimum glucose is just that, the minimum that your glucose hit. And maximum glucose, same thing. It's the maximum that your glucose hit during that specific time range. Sleep average is also pretty self-explanatory. That is your average glucose while sleeping. And again, morning average, pretty self-explanatory. This is your average upon waking. So what do you want all of these numbers to be? Well, there is a healthy range and it is individualized, but there are some goals to work towards. For time and range, you're looking for 95% of the time or more. For variability, you want that to be 15 or under. For minimum and maximum, I don't really pay attention to these two, to be honest. For minimum, sometimes when I first put on my sensor, my minimum drops to like a 15 and my blood glucose is not actually 15. I think there's just some wonky thing going on with the sensor that's pretty common. So I just ignore the minimum. I'm not diabetic, so I'm not worried about my blood sugar dropping super low. And then as far as maximum, I personally follow a carnivore diet. So I don't really see my blood glucose levels go much higher than 110, maybe 115 tops, unless I have a high carb, high sugar cheat meal. And then even then, the highest I've seen it go up was like 175 and then within an hour it was back below 140. So I don't really pay attention to the minimums and maximums personally. Next up is your sleep and your goal here should be 100 or less. And same with your morning average, 100 or less. I will say that if you eat dinner a little later, you will most likely have slightly elevated sleep averages. That's why I like to eat my last meal pretty early in the day so that my body has time to go through the digestive process. And then by the time I'm going to bed, my body is ready to sleep and to do all the cellular turnover and all that kind of stuff instead of focusing on digesting food. Also, another thing that I'd like to mention that a lot of people experience is the dawn effect. Taking a look at my data, my average glucose is 87 as is my sleep average, but in the morning you'll see there's lots of spikes there. It averages 87, but there are some days where I'm in the high 90s, low 100s. That is the dawn effect. This happens because your cortisol levels increase as you're waking up. This is the signal that your body is giving you to wake up in the morning. And then your blood glucose levels correspond to that. 
The elevations that I'm seeing are like in the 90s, sometimes the low 100s, so I'm not remotely concerned at all. That is really not a big deal. The great thing about NutriSense is you don't have to remember any of the ranges I just told you. They have a very convenient color-coded system, green, yellow, and red. You just wanna keep all of these metrics in the green. Let's move on to the next page. To the right of trends is Nutritionist. One of the great things about NutriSense is they have a whole team of nutritionists that you have access to. And another cool thing about this is if you have health insurance, it may pay for this feature. Whatever way of eating you choose, carnivore, keto, vegan, vegetarian, Mediterranean, paleo, there is a nutritionist out there that can help you reach your goals. Just click on the learn more button under scheduling a video call or click on send a message. And if you don't have those options, what will pop up is a screen so you can get a nutritionist if you want to. You absolutely don't have to use this feature, but I do think it's super cool that you have access to it because some people need a bit of coaching and it is nice to have somebody available to help you run different experiments with food using the continuous glucose monitor. The final page we're going to look at to the right of nutritionist is the learn tab. Here you have your FAQ, your sensor guide, and a few courses talking about blood glucose levels, food, and so much more. Let's now go back to the home tab and move to the upper right hand corner of the app. You will see two icons. One is a little star and if you click on that you'll be brought to Nora AI. Here you can ask any of your basic questions and get answers right away. Next to the little star icon is a little bubble. If you click on this, it will bring you over to your messages where you can access any messages from your nutritionist or if you need help with your subscription or any other questions, they have live real people to talk to so you can send a message from here. Now, if you look at the upper center of the app's homepage, you'll see the word today. If you click on that, a calendar will pull up so you can easily scroll through all of the days where you were wearing a continuous glucose monitor and you can look at your data. Finally, let's go to the upper left hand of your screen. Here you will see your profile pic that you set up in the very beginning. If you click on this, you will be brought to the back end of the app where you can check out different programs and add-ons. You can change your password, you can update your profile. This is also where you can link your wearable like your Apple Watch, your Garmin, your Fitbit. It even links up with the Keto Mojo Meter. So click on settings and then go into integrations. And from here, you can give permissions to NutriSense to access all of that data. I personally have my Apple Watch and my Keto Mojo Meter connected so that I can have all of that data within NutriSense as well. Backing out of integrations, let's click on notifications. Here you can adjust any of your app notifications to your preference. Backing out of notifications, let's click on system. Here you can adjust your units of measure from imperial to metric change it to light mode or dark mode, and adjust those glucose ranges. We talked about that earlier. Also, if you're tracking ketones, you can put in a ketone range that you're going for. Backing out of system, let's go into sensor. Here it will tell you the type of sensor you're using, its activation date, and serial number. It will tell you how many days you have left on your sensor, and this is also where you can make a manual calibration to make sure you're getting the most accurate data. Let's go over the manual calibration because this is a feature that I use every time I put on a new sensor. There are varying ranges of accuracy in all of the different brands of continuous glucose monitors out there. The very most accurate continuous glucose monitors are the Dexcom 7 and the Freestyle Libre 3. But even with that amount of accuracy, sometimes you still need to make a calibration. The sensor that you're getting with NutriSense, if they're sending you the sensors, are going to be the Freestyle Libre, the 14 day. And I always calibrate my sensor. So here is how you do it. Apply your sensor like you normally would and then I take a manual blood stick get that number and then as soon as you're done doing that scan your sensor and see what your blood glucose number is within the app if they're within 10 points of each other you're good to go if they're not or wildly off you're going to need to adjust that you're going to need to calibrate your app a little bit go into your settings and then come over here to sensor and then you'll see this manual calibration click on that and then you'll be able to adjust up or down I'm typically having to adjust my meter a little bit so they do this in five unit increments basically I'm just moving it up or down just a little bit I'll wait about eight hours after having my sensor on then I'll do the manual stick I'm already doing manual glucose readings with my keto mojo meter so this really isn't a big deal for me but if you're not doing the keto mojo meter or you don't have a manual blood glucose meter at home it's not that big of a deal I just wanted you to know that this feature was available to you within the freestyle Libre app you cannot calibrate your sensor so I'm really happy that NutriSense has this feature for us to use. 
Backing out of the sensor page, we already did integrations. So next you'll see on the screen the ability to update your subscription, export data, clear caches, along with the privacy policy and terms of use. Now that we've done a full walkthrough of the NutriSense app, let's talk about some of the intricacies and caveats to tracking your glucose levels. First off, how is a continuous glucose monitor measuring your glucose? Well, a CGM is not using drops of blood to measure your glucose. What it's using is interstitial fluid which is the fluid that is in between your cells. What this means is if you take a manual blood stick, you might have slightly different numbers than your continuous glucose monitor. I find that my CGM lags behind a manual blood stick by about five to 10 minutes. Now, some people won't like that very much because they think that it should be the exact same number, but it's not measuring the same thing. One is measuring interstitial fluid, one is measuring blood. Obviously, measuring it directly through the blood is going to be the very most accurate, but with a finger stick, you're only getting one measurement at one point in time. The continuous glucose monitor is taking glucose measurements every couple of minutes over the two week period that you're wearing it. So yeah, okay, it lags a little bit behind a finger stick, but overall you're getting all of these data points so you can see overall trends. For example, Maybe you took a blood stick and your glucose levels were 95, and then a couple minutes later, it went up to 130. But you wouldn't know that because you didn't take another blood stick a couple minutes after you just did one. But with a continuous glucose monitor, you would be able to see those trends. Next, try running experiments with food and lifestyle while you are using the NutriSense app. With the NutriSense app, you can run lots of different experiments to figure out how different foods and different lifestyle habits affect your blood glucose levels. For example, there was this creator that I was following before I actually started NutriSense. This is kind of what turned me on to it in the first place. He was eating a different breakfast every morning to see how each breakfast would affect his blood glucose levels. So the first morning he had oatmeal, the second morning he had oatmeal and then a banana. The next morning he ate oatmeal and then a banana and then some eggs and bacon. And then the fourth morning he had the eggs and bacon first and then oatmeal and a banana. And then he showed the different effects of the blood glucose levels. Typically, if you eat your protein first and then your carbs, that's going to dampen the glucose spike. So for example, let's say that you had some steak first and then maybe 30 minutes later you ate a dessert. The corresponding glucose spike is not going to go as high. Let's say it would have gone up to like 140. Let's say it went up to 110 instead. And instead of being like a drastic spike, it can be more of like a hump. If you're eating a high carb, high sugar meal, you know, and you see a giant glucose spike, that's not a big deal, that's natural, that's what's going to happen. The important thing is that after your blood glucose spikes that it returns to 140 or below within two hours of eating. And again, if you were to eat some protein before you had that high sugar, high carb item, that would dampen the effects. Your blood sugar would not spike as high in most cases. And also, it's not just food that can affect your glucose levels. Exercise, sleep or lack thereof, stress. When I go into a steam room or a sauna, I see a blood glucose spike. Alcohol. Alcohol can affect your levels too. Spikes aren't necessarily bad and dips aren't necessarily good. I think the most important thing is just trying to keep your average under 100 and to keep that variability 15 or less. That way you're not having drastic spikes, drastic dips all day long. You're just keeping everything nice and tight. I tell you all of this because I don't want you to get freaked out if you see spikes in your blood glucose or dips in your blood glucose. All of that is natural. That is how your body is supposed to work. There are different ranges like averages and ranges of spikes and dips for every single person. So don't try to compare yourself to somebody else. Just try to stay in the green and figure out, you know, what lifestyle and food choices are best for you. I love the data that NutriSense has given me. It has allowed me to build on healthy habits and to eliminate habits that weren't working so well for me. In my latest carnivore blood work video, I talk about some of the recent blood work I had done and I also go over my NutriSense data for the first quarter of 2024. So if you're interested in that, I'm gonna link that video right here. If you have any questions about non-diabetic continuous glucose monitoring or the NutriSense app in general, please leave them in the comment section below. I love hearing from you. And with that, I hope this video was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.